Another edition of Riding Home, Dean Leggy and Matt DeBerry. Matt, there's been so much that's been going on, but I want to focus on this basic question, which is now that we've seen everything that's happened at the uh, Combine, now that we've seen Georgia win the national championship, I'm, I'm just going to ask, is Georgia the best program in the country? Man, it's really tough to say. I guess it's just them or Alabama still. I mean, you can't take away what they've done the past, you know, previous years still. But Georgia's been competing for championships since 2017 when they, you know, came oh and won overtime away uh, from, you know, being, having two national championships in the last four or five years. So, but I mean, they're an NFL factory right now. That's what we're seeing at the combine. Recruits know this and. Um, this isn't going to be the last group that impresses at the combine either. There's a lot of five stars who sat on the bench last year and saw what's happening and are learning and still developing who are going to make a lot of big plays in this upcoming season. So, I mean, right now they're the number one program. Uh, but if you look at the, maybe the past five years, it's still probably going to have to be Alabama, but Georgia's right there. You said they were the number one program. That, that's what I'm asking. I, I'm not sure yeah. I'm ready to make that, that I'm not sure I'm ready to make that, uh, declaration but I, I think it's a legitimate question because I, I think it's probably still Alabama but to, but the question is moving forward what's it going to be and and that I think that's harder to I think that's harder to know for sure are, are you okay now I don't, I don't think I influence you on these questions but are you so you said Alabama is there anyone else that's around as far as those those two are concerned Ohio State? Ohio State. I was going to say Clemson's take a massive drop back. Texas A&M are supposed to be climbing that ladder and joining right. the elite of the elite. We'll see if they do that. But Oklahoma's taking a step back. LSU's still trying to get there. Notre Dame just lost their coach. They're going to take a step back. Southern Cal, who knows how long it takes for them. Um, maybe the Dan Lanning gets it together at Oregon before they do at Southern Cal. So there's a lot of teams up in the air that you know need to prove themselves and a lot of teams that – are still trying to get things back together. Hey, listen, uh, make sure you're picking up Dog Destruction. You can get the link down below. Matt, you got a chance to look at the book finally. Yeah. And uh, I know a lot of people are happy to get their hands on it. But, um, you know, you don't, you don't have these kind of moments without superior recruiting and development, Matt. This guy here, you saw him play in Las Vegas. This guy here, Nolan Smith, uh, one of the top players in the country. I think that's... Uh, Chris, uh, I, think, I think that's Chris Smith right behind number eleven there, um, and and Chris Smith was developed and has been developed over the last few years. Yeah, number twenty nine, Chris Smith. I think Darian Kendrick is number eleven, but that, that just shows. I mean, they're developing the three stars. No, number um, eleven for Alabama. No, number eleven for Alabama running back. Yeah, um, I mean, there are so many guys. Then you have guys like Dan Jackson who. Uh, got that block at the end. He's got a great shot right there. Uh, no, he's Jackson. got a copy Dan, of that Dan book, Jackson but... got about killed in that in that shot. He about got, but he got got Keely into the end zone. You know. Yeah. But that's what we're seeing with Kirby Smart. He's developing not only the three stars, but the five stars are not bust. We've seen five stars come to Athens, you know, years and years ago, and not really uh, turn into the player that they were supposed to be. That's not happening right now. Um, he's even, bringing even in Robert, walk-ons. He's even bringing Robert, in transfers. Robert, yeah. Robert Beal specifically, I think, is a guy that it took him a while to get going, you know, and he was highly rated. I think you warned people this might take some time. Um, I'm not sure I like him as much as I like some of the other players on the team. But Robert continued to churn out, and now we're seeing that he led the team in sacks this past year. It's a good example of Channing Tindall is a good example of this as well. By the way, Quay Walker is a good example of this. Of guys, William that, Poole. Yeah, William he made Poole, lots of plays in the championship. Certainly Chris Smith, William Poole. We're naming a lot of people. They're not all coming back. But that's why I asked a question. You know, I don't recall. I, the only other program I've seen people talk about like this in the NFL draft and combine is Alabama, and it, they don't do this all the time. So is this one special class? Is this one special year at Georgia? Or is this the beginning, or are we in the middle of something that that people need to get used to? That That's my question is, where are we at here? Are we at the start of something, in the middle of it, or at the end? Well, I think we're definitely at the middle of it. And I think Alabama, I think it's towards the end. We'll see. They're supposed to be really, really good next year. Georgia was the number one team last year, as we saw. I still think Alabama is the number one program, but 
if Georgia can go toe to toe with Alabama again next year with all they have coming back and um, with everything Georgia lost after this year, then we're going to really say, okay, maybe Georgia is the number one program if they can especially repeat, which is going to be so tough to do. But again, there's not going to be many teams better than Georgia to start the year. I mean, maybe Ohio State, but Alabama is, I guess, going to be that team number one. And rightfully so. We'll see again how good A&M is. But Georgia is right in the middle of this. And uh, we could talk this whole offseason guy, about guys like Mikhail Sherman, who could have a breakout year. Small Munded, plenty of guys on defense. Right. And then we need there's receivers stepping up. Uh, Kenny McIntosh and the other running backs are going to have more opportunities. Oscar Delp, a guy who could come in and make an impact as a freshman. We know what Brock Bowers can Brock do. Bowers. So uh, the talent is there, and um, they should be competing for championships the rest of the way. That's what I want to write about soon. The standard at Georgia is to, you know, like Kirby said at halftime of the Florida game, just make them quit, make your opponent quit over and over, play after play, just dominate. And that's what they did. So does the standard increase after winning a national championship and sending all these guys to the NFL, or does the standard at Georgia – stay the same year after year. So um, that's what I want to see. And a lot of these younger guys um, are going to have to step up and make plays, but they saw what it takes. And it all starts with practice. I mean, Brock Bowers is getting a lot of touches because he's outworking guys like Darnell Washington. And if you practice hard, you're going to play. And we're going to see, you know, a lot of guys from that, the 2020 class continue to emerge in that 21 class. And We'll see if there are any freshmen in the 22 class um, who work hard and, and see the field. Because if they do, they beat out some really, really strong, possibly five-star guys who are ahead of them. So there are a lot of guys who uh, have an opportunity to have a really big season, Dean. Hey, man, I, I, I'm old enough to remember when people used to accuse me of not letting you talk, you know, on here. <laughs> right? I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, I haven't done this for a while. It's been a couple of weeks. So uh, especially – the way they just dominated that NFL draft, though, it, it, well, it, it's fun to talk about these guys. Well, that's what's so, you know, amazing. Another order uh, just now, Matt, uh, for for dog instruction. I have to point these things out. It, ha it happens often while I'm recording, yeah. which is a strange thing. What were you saying? This is probably Dan Jackson's family ordering another one. <laughs> I don't think there's I don't think there's any shame there. Dan Jackson's family is actually written about um, in the Vanderbilt in the Arkansas portion of the book. I'm not going to read it. People get annoyed when I read it or, or some people do, but they're being selfish. This is a free right. service, Matt. <laughs> right. You don't have to right. do anything. You're not paying us any money. We just want you to check out what we got. Um, Dan, well, Dan Jackson is a great example of. A, a what's becoming a, an increasingly significant line of players who have fought their way on at Georgia. I mean, obviously Stetson is one of them, Dan Jackson. I, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't put Smith, um, Will Smith, Christopher Smith or William Poole in that category, but they were forgotten about and, 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 and they have come on and gotten older and play. I think that's the thing about Georgia's situation right now is, 17 and 18, you know, in 17, that was a really older bunch. And in 18, they, they weren't as old, but they were still pretty good. 19, uh, you know, losing to LSU, that was the you know, lead better. And all that. These guys were the first time in a long time that George has been old. And, and when you look at the scholarship chart, there are going to be a lot of juniors and seniors on this team, too. I, I think Alabama should be the favorite. And they, and they and they are, but I'm not like uh, I, I I'm not so certain that they just win the national championship for sure. The only team that can repeat is Georgia because they're the only team that won it this past year, and they really shouldn't repeat. But I I think they got their chance. I think the the 27 team and this past year's team were really similar in the fact that in 17 you had guys like Nick Chubb, Sony Michelle, Lorenzo Carter, Davin Bellamy. I'm sure I'm missing a couple others. Come back. And we saw the impact they made as seniors on that team. And then this past year, Jordan Davis, Devonta Wyatt, James Cook, Zamir White, and others did the same thing. We saw what they did in their final year. And uh, this past year, Nolan Smith came back. We're seeing Robert Beal in his sixth year. William Poole, Chris Smith have been here for a long time. Um, so there are some veteran, experienced guys on this team. Of course, Stetson Bennett. Uh, Kenny McIntosh has been around for a while. Um, so you do have your veterans, but – there's also there has to be a few of these younger guys come up and 
uh, and make a name for themselves, especially on defense. They're missing so much, who, who, and especially who, at linebacker. That, that leads to the natural natural question. I mean, who is the person to to watch? Just just give us one person that you think that either signed in twenty one or just signed just now that that you think. They could be saying like they're like Brock Bowers. That's a little aggressive. Let's just say they're like Cedric Van Fran. Well, I, I want to say Jamon Dumas Johnson because I feel like whoever's in the middle of the field is going to be coached up by Glenn Schumann. Certainly, there's you know there was Roquan, Monty Rice, and the Kobe Dean. There's got to be the next guy, and we saw him make a few plays as a freshman last year. And if he develops and continues to learn the offense and be that leader, I mean, he's got seven, eight months for the the first game. I still think there's a lot of improving and developing to do, but. He's been coached by one of the best, and you're going to have guys like Smile Munden, MJ Sherman, Xavier Sori around him, but I think they need a guy in the middle of the field who can be that Roquan, N'Kobe Dean type of role, and we've seen when they have you know, a Butkus Award type of guy in the middle of the field, they're going to be really, really good, and I think he has the potential to be that type of guy. There's a lot of uh, optimism about the offensive side of the ball from inside, from people that I talk to inside the program. They don't represent the entire program, but they are one facet of it. And um, I think there's a lot of, of, of confidence on the offensive side of the ball. The issue, the issue, man, really more than anything, Matt, there's just not a lot of games that they should lose or, you know, they could get into dog fights. Yeah, but – and it's something we're going to talk about in future riding homes. Can Georgia – there's only uh, – I think there's only two programs in the country that have played a New Year five, New Year's five, New Year's six bowl game since 2017. And it's not the two you would think. It's Georgia and Alabama. It's Georgia and Ohio State. It's not Alabama. Alabama played in the Citrus Bowl this past year. Uh, it's Clemson plays it plays in the Cheez It Bowl. So um, Ohio State and Georgia have been the most consistent. They're also two of the three teams that have played for the national championship these last two years. I think the question for Kirby is not can now can you win the national championships? It's can how many can you win? For me. Um, you know, I I think multiple is the answer, uh, and 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 I, I it's it's easy looking backwards, but I don't know where we are in this ten year run. I mean, are we seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, and he's won one, and there's five more years to go, or is this uh, more like Nick did at Alabama, and it, it, you know it's a twelve year thing, and he's going to add four these last eight years or something like that. That's that's my question. I don't know, but if just and I, I hate to be this guy, I I, I do. But just one, and it's, it, it, they're too good to just have one. Yeah, I mean, Alabama, we've seen them be just a machine year after year. They turn them but out. They machine, replace five man. stars with five stars. They're, get, they're looking yeah. a lot like that Alabama machine. And um, they're going to have talented quarterback always. They're going to get their five-star recruits. And, of course, what they did this past year and what they're doing, you know, in the NFL Combine is just going to make them even more attractive. They could already recruit. Now they can walk in any living room and answer any type of question uh, that anyone has for them. So um, Kirby's got his coaching tree going on. Uh, that's true. Everything is going right. Every, I mean, there are not a lot of weaknesses in this program. I mean, they have uh, the facilities. They have the, the money to spend. They've got people who are bought in. Uh, there's not one thing that I can point to and say, hey, Kirby needs to do this better. Or as a program, they need to do this better. I mean, people are still going to complain about the quarterback situation, even though it just is what it is. Um, but at least it'll give us something to talk about. But I think right. Stetson could absolutely lead them back to a championship. I know a lot of people might not want to hear that, but they don't have a problem at quarterback. And they don't really have a problem anywhere on the team because I do think they still have a lot of talented young depth, especially on defense, that I think people are going to see. Look, this, we're going to talk about Stetson some other time. And, you know, we call it like it is, but the, this, this play right here, people, people, the, the Stetson haters, I get it. I mean, you don't like the guy. Okay, whatever. But this play right here to A.D. Mitchell, that wasn't a result, y'all, of Stetson handing the ball off and Georgia getting down the field. They threw it on back to back to back to back to back plays. They didn't, they did not run the ball on that drive. To win the national championship, they did not run the ball, Matt. And so that play put them back on top for good. Then they found another, they scored another touchdown on a pass. And then obviously Keely Ringo with the thing. So I don't, I'm, I'm not Stetson that, you know, Stetson has legitimately has representatives now. He has signed with an agent. They can, 
they can be his, they can carry water for him. But let's call it what it is. I mean, the guy made the plays to win the national championship. He just did. And if you're not comfortable uh, acknowledging that and also acknowledging that the defense was generational, then I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I I don't want to have a discussion about if quarterback – Bryce Young got his ass whipped because he had to throw too much in the game against Georgia. All quarterbacks are human. Trevor Lawrence is human. Uh, Tim Tebow, Johnny Manziel, they're all human. If they have someone in their grill, they're not going to play well. So, um, you know, Georgia, everybody is going back. The two games, stats and losses, a starter, two of them were to Alabama. I mean, okay. So Joe Burrow lost yeah. to Alabama. I mean, it, it happens. Yeah. But let's acknowledge what it is, which is a really good player. That's where we're going to leave it right now. Make sure you're picking up Darkstruction. Link is down below. Matt, thanks for watching. Uh, or thanks for being on, Matt. And they let you talk yeah. this time, right? Yeah. Okay. My hey, man. We'll, we we'll, see, we'll see you on the website.